What's up guys, Alex from Pumped Antics, and today we're going to be talking about Dr. Mike Isretel and his recent uh, competition in the world of bodybuilding. Now, from what Dr. Mike says, he's been competing in bodybuilding for, I guess, years. I'm not really too familiar with his background in it. Um, my point of reference starts with his most recent show and his recent Instagram posts and the videos that I've seen of his over the last two years or so, right? So, taking a look at his Instagram here, we got him um, looking pretty peeled pretty peeled. I think this is basically pre-contest condition or right after the contest. Um, he's got the climbing bicep vein. I mean, you can see the striations in his chest, striations in the shoulders. He's looking pretty beastly, legs. Um, not clear separation there, but you know, he's looking peeled nonetheless, right? So again, we got a shot from the front here. He's looking pretty dialed. Um, and I don't know if this is right after the show or right before, like I said, but I mean, it is a little bit lacking in conditioning, but like I said, if it's his first show, I think he's looking pretty good, and I could probably verify that real quick, so let me try and do that. Okay, so looking for like two seconds, I found <laughs> that he competed last year at the NPC uh, Masters Nationals. Check out the one week out post. Okay, he's, he's looking honestly... He's looking really similar to like he did in 2023, uh, 225.56 and 225. So he's like exactly the damn same. Like uh, you would be hard pressed, unless we're getting really uh, pedantic, you would be hard pressed to find much of a difference between 2023 Mike Isertel and 2024. And here's another one, a couple days out from the 2023 NPC Masters National, 222.5. All right, so here we go. Here's actually a good a good frame of reference for how Mike Isretel looked in the past. So we can go all the way back to 2013 and check out our boy. Check him out right here. He kind of looks not great. This was his first true bodybuilding competition in the NPC at least, or at least the ones they have photos of. Um, yeah, he's looking completely soft. Um, way less muscle mass. His legs now look you know, insane compared to what they did. But he doesn't really know how to pose as well here. You can tell his posing is a little bit awkward and his legs are completely soft looking in 2013. Um, I'm not crapping on the guy at all. I'm not shitting on him. I'm not Greg Doucette, right? <laughs> but um, what I am saying is that, you know, you can see a big improvement and that's something that we should be applauding the guy for, right? So let's go to 2020. I didn't even know there was bodybuilding competitions in 2020. 2020, here we go. We got a shot of him uh, still looking significantly, you know, softer than he did here. I mean, he doesn't have a feathered back, you know. He's not like in top, top conditioning, you know what I'm saying? But he looks, you know, significantly better than uh, 2020. Yeah, wow. Um, it's pretty clear that his posing from 2013 to 2020 got a lot better. Looks like he knows what he's doing. A little bit more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See that side chest? Nice, bro. Nice. You know what I'm saying? Just a little bit soft in 2020. But he was still getting his bearings, right? This was his first bodybuilding competition that was at least kept track of by the NPC in seven years. Let's see, 2021. Uh, I don't think this is Mike Isertel, but it could be. And there doesn't appear to be any photos of him in the uh, 2021, 2021. Yeah, there's no photos of him from 2021, but he placed second overall at the Masters Nationals. Let's see here. Michael Isertel. And this is last year, 2023. There's photos that I showed you earlier, but here's some more. We can do a little bit of comparisons. So yeah, he, he still is looking a little bit soft. He's coming in a little bit soft. Um placed fifth in the last one, um, and then I think the year before that it was second, and I don't remember the other ones, but yeah, he did have a good chance of winning a pro card when he placed second from the year that had no photos, but we don't know what he looked like. Now, this is this year, so let's, let's get a comparison. All right, here we go. 2024 versus 2023. Boom, boom, boom. Man, he's looking, this man's looking damn near the same. I mean, it looks like his posing is a little bit better. Um, his leg, his leg flare is a little bit wider because, you know, he has a little bit of a, a thick waist uh, and he's got to make up for it. 
Um, you know. All right, and then right here you have 2023, and right here you have 2024. Um, yeah, man. I mean, here he has a bit more tan, right? And I think that you know helps him out a little bit um, in terms of showing off how lean he is, how conditioned he is. Because he just looks a little bit more conditioned in the legs, especially when you look. But I think that comes down to the amount of tan that they put on him. And I don't know if they put enough on him this year. And actually, if I remember correctly, in his Instagram post somewhere, he says that he placed poorly because they didn't put enough tan on him. Um, I don't know if that's exactly the reasoning. But before we get into that, let's, let's take a look at the competition that he was against. Here we go. Let's see the guy who placed last, Last, because why not? It's fun to see the guy who placed last. Yeah, this guy, honestly in better conditioning than Dr. Mike. Um, check the guy who placed just above Mike. We got uh, old Mike Simkoviak. Yeah, honestly, this guy is more conditioned for sure, right? Like, the separation of Mike's arms is definitely a little bit worse than this guy, but honestly, I think Mike should have beat this guy at least, right? Maybe I'm crazy. Maybe I'm tweaking. I'm not a bodybuilding expert. I'm just a guy on YouTube. But going back, let's see. One, two, and three. First place here, we got Michael Von Ratz. Could be a little bit more conditioned, but this is but this is an amateur show, so like they don't have to be crazy conditioned. I guess he did win a pro card at this show, so or he already had one. So shout out this guy. Here we got this fella. What was his name? John Fetto. John Fetto man. Yo, I don't know. This guy, dude, maybe I'm crazy, but I think our boy Dr. Mike is could have beat this guy if he was a little bit more conditioned. Okay, I see. Yeah, I mean, unfortunately, our boy Mike has um, short arms, short arm king, short height king. You know what I'm saying he's a short king. He's a beast, though. Um, this guy is a bit more shredded than him, right? But, like... This man's waist, I don't know, man. Those obliques just aren't aren't aesthetic to me. If you just cut those obliques off, this guy would be fucking beast mode, right? This guy's got tattoos and shit, too. I mean, I have tattoos. But, um, yeah, I don't know what I'm saying, right? I think that Dr. Mike, he could have had this guy, right? He could have had this guy. <laughs> Dude, I don't know, man. I don't know, man. I think that, um, I think Mike should have had this guy, too. I mean, I obviously wasn't there, but, dude, maybe I'm just meat riding, you know what I'm saying? Maybe I'm just meat riding. But, uh, uh. but I think Mike could have had this fella too. Either way, what, what, the, what I'm trying to say here is I think Mike, you know, regardless if you have Greg Doucette making one, two, um, three, four, I don't know, like 10 videos on Dr. Mike, if you have... Greg Doucette making 10 videos on Dr. Mike. I think that we should be congratulating the guy because he's made a lot of progress in the last, you know, 10 years of bodybuilding. He's made a lot of progress and he's gained a lot of size. Um, this year to last year, not so much, kind of looks the same. There's nothing wrong with that though. I mean, the guy's like, what, 40? 40 almost? And yeah, maybe Greg Doucette's right. Maybe he should hang it up. Um, obviously, being on large amounts of drugs is not good for you, especially in your 40s or close to 40s. And this is a clip from his interview with Dr. Mike, the guy who fought in that uh, influencer boxing match, you know. And this is about Dr. Mike's experience taking uh, performance-enhancing drugs and how angry it makes him. Experience being aware of the dark side of anabolic use. What is that? <laughs> how long do you have anxiety? like you would not believe. Every day that I'm on high doses, I wake up in the morning afraid of the rest of my day. Intrusive thoughts. Yeah, I mean, that is a thing that's going to happen when you're overloading your body with hormones. Um, you're going to... A common talking point about steroids and one of their benefits is the aggression factor, and that's going to be, you know, amplified when you are, one, dieting extremely hard, and two, on a high dose in order to retain as much contractile tissue as possible on your intense bodybuilding cut, um, you're just going to be really pissed off probably most of the time, right? So Dr. Mike is, yeah. I think about violence 
all the time. Well, if your testosterone is 25 times what it's supposed to be, what the hell do you think it's gonna make you think about? Another one is a marked proximate reduction of IQ. Like right now, as I talk to you, I'm on. Damn, bro, he's really lowering his IQ. Contest prop, I'm on a considerable dose of anabolics. I'm not as smart right now, and I can feel it. It's this fog an inability to perceive a broad spectrum of positive human emotion. I live in a really beautiful area in Michigan and I walk out and there's a pond and these trees and I know that I like looking at them, but it's a memory to me. I go work out every morning and I look at the pond and the trees and I'm like, mm, like all I feel is rage and frustration and anger. That's my daily life. Yeah, so in regards to the IQ reduction and brain fog, that is a researched effect of anabolic steroids and yeah it's a thing that happens like you will get dumber um probably reversible and especially if you're a young guy and you're like you know like 16 to 20 and your brain's still developing 16 to 25 and your brain's still developing and you hop on gear like it's gonna be like it could permanently reduce your iq but this might just be temporary because you know lots of drugs aren't exactly conducive to good neural function i guess you could say now moving on to dr mike's instagram after his um performance at the bodybuilding show he, i don't think he was happy with it and you know he probably watched all of greg Doucette's videos and and didn't really like um being shit on for you know two weeks straight by greg Doucette every day you know getting a new video made about you telling you it's time to stop bro you need to stop dude you need to get off those performance-hancing drugs. One of Greg Doucette's arguments when I was watching his video was like, if you see someone who's a drug addict, then what's the issue with telling them to stop? I have all these people in my comments telling me I'm a terrible person. Well, Greg, I don't know if you're a terrible guy, but you definitely are a bit of a clout chaser, dude. And I'm sure you know it, but you're like a drama queen. You're like the neighborhood drama queen, Greg. And that's okay. You own it. So I guess I can't fault you too much. But anyway, Dr. Mike, after he lost, he typed this up, maybe because of Greg said he has the, uh, whatever this is, sad Goku, Dragon Ball Z guy, I don't know. He says, Android 18, maybe that's what this guy's name is, Android 18, after defeating recently, ascended Vegeta. You worked so hard for so little. After getting into the objectively the best shape of my life, I placed out of the top five in my most recent show, in large part sort of hilariously because of insufficient tanning, as I mentioned. I had planned to keep competing, but because of work and family priorities, I need to switch the script for the time being and not compete. I'm, parentheses, by blood work, the healthiest ever been measured at, coupled with my physique being at its, ever, being its best ever, uh, makes walking away from competing and bodybuilding for a while very, very painful. But I've done lots and lots of hard and painful things before, and the suffering this generates will make me tougher and less mentally fragile going forward. Does this feel like a consolation right now? God, no. I'm livid. Angry. Is it logical? Yes. So I choose the best path rather than the path I desire. Not for the first time, not for the last time. So do dreams come true? Not always. But do nightmares make you hard as fuck? Hell yeah. Bring them on. I mean, I guess he doesn't have the genetics for Pro Card. It's... Hard to say. I mean, he plays second at that one show. I think he just needs to get lucky, honestly. And if he kept grinding away at bodybuilding, I think that there is a reality in which he could get a pro card by winning one of the shows. He competes at a ton of those shows. There's going to be one show where either he looks really good or the competition's off and he's going to get that card. Like, it's probably better for him to stop just for health reasons, right? And I'm not sure if I'm buying that he's the healthiest he's ever been measured at, considering... <laughs> I don't know, he's probably on fucking, he's probably on, like, trend, dude. Like, he's probably on trend. His lipids are probably all out of whack, unless I'm completely off base and he's, like, just taking tests or something like that. But I doubt it, if, considering what he said about being on a considerable dose of anabolics for a contest prep, right? Now in the comments, you have Coach Adam Kelly, whoever that is, saying, the only negative part of competitive bodybuilding, way too subjective for a fitness sport. Um, yeah, I kind of agree. Yeah. <laughs> I kind of agree, and so did a lot of the guys in the 90s, Kevin Lavroni, Sean Ray. And, okay, yeah, he actually posted the photos of the other guys, first of all. Um, showed you the comparisons already. But, yeah, this guy is not wrong. Um, Dr. Mike looks the best of those three, in my opinion, too. 
Nightmares make you hard as fuck. Is that why I always have morning wood? Bodybuilding with Aaron. Very frustrating after the work to get let down by the tanning crew. Not acceptable by any means. But that being said, you got up and did it. And did it in style. Looked awesome. And very clearly placed in the top two. Most likely the win based on the back shot that I've seen. Chin up and keep on trucking. I agree looking at the photos. Shout out bodybuilding with Aaron. Don't worry, Dr. Mike. You're still number one in our hearts. Jace of Spades, 07. Tommy Barholm. It was an incredible stack class of dudes. I was there for prejudging. Objectively, every dude that had you in placing could have won a pro card on any other day. You do great, man. You placing in a stacked lineup is nothing to sneeze at. Keep your head held high and realize you achieved your best physique ever. Be proud of yourself, man. Yeah, I mean, he was on par with his best physique ever, at least the last year. Todd Whitting, you're not really blaming yourself placing on your tan. <laughs> uh, did Tyler tell you you would have won if you had a better tan? Nicholas, the fact there wasn't a single line or striation from the back may have played a small factor, but what do we know? The kimchi lifter, he really is. Lol, he was the leanest he's ever been, but still not national level stage lean. We don't have to win a small regional show for sure. To couple his posing is atrocious. Look at the picture of his side reflex slash quarter turn. But basically, uh, what do you guys think? Do you think Dr. Mike could have won that show? Um, I'm on the fence about it, thinking about it a little bit more. I think that perhaps... He was just not conditioned enough. But you look at the competitors, and they're not really... He's about the same level as them, right? And other people, I don't think, are seeing that. Um, they're arguably a bit more conditioned. But yeah, what do you guys think? Let me know in the comments. Uh, subscribe, like, follow us on Instagram, at Pumped Antics, and uh, see you next time.